Coming to you from the heart of the Pacific, brought to you by Paulie by Design. Respected at all times. Broadcasting from San Francisco, California, the city by the bay. It's about to go, about to go down. We shine on positive Pacific Island and road model every Sunday. Party on a Sunday. From 10 a.m. to noon, it's time for the iconic Pika Podcast with your hosts. Listening to Naki and Carl. Missed it, missed it. Uh, the timing's off a little bit, but uh, we are um, in our new studio location, um, <laughs> which would be Naki's dining room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my dining room. So uh, today's March 22nd, I believe, season mm. four, episode nine. Um, we are in our, our new temporary studio. Um, it was important for us to keep broadcasting and not miss an episode. So we went and stole all of our equipment out of our old studio yeah. and installed it in Naki's dining room. So big shout out to, uh, Naki and her entire family mm-hmm. for letting us take over, um, this space because it's not getting broken down and, and set up every week. It just sits here taking up space, um, each week. So thank you, Naki. To you You're and your welcome. family. Thank you to Mena for fixing all of our uh, technical issues. And right. she did it a lot faster than I do it. So we're going to hope to have more experience and more time with our Mena. Our producer. Our new producer for the next <laughs> few weeks. <laughs> um, so today in the first hour, we are without our uh, third host, Neil Ve'eve. Neil's at home. Um, yeah, boy where he fan. should be. Where we all uh, should be. And um, making sure that he's safe and all of the people at his house are safe. So we're without that uh, third host. We'll go through our normal check-ins. Today is all about COVID-19. Hopefully, we can uh, allay some fears. We can eliminate some rumors or mistruths or half-truths. We have Uh uh, an interview in the second hour with Dr. Samoa. Um, a lot of the answers that you all sent in to us, we're going to answer. Mm-hmm, and then mm-hmm. Naki and I had some of our own questions, but uh, that's the show for today. Naki, what's up? Uh, let's see. Good morning. Um, I cut my hair. I, um, I had a treatment this week. So for those of you who don't know, I have lymphoma, which is cancer of the blood, and my hair was falling out. Um, So I had a hard time with um, going back and forth and uh, cutting my hair or not to cut my hair. And so um, yesterday we went to go walk um, Sunga and I just came back and said, fuck it. <laughs> and Mo um, shaved my head because I had pieces that were um, missing. And so um, there you go. So this is my new look for a minute um, until uh, hair grows back, when it grows back. Hi, Neil. Thank you. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, that's, that's what's going on here. And uh, what else? What else? So let's talk about the hair for a second. From mm-hmm. my perspective, um, I've always looked at Naki as being uh, an amazingly brave lady um, that just calls it like it is. And um, when I saw she sent me the picture last night, <clears throat> I was here all day and there was hair on her head all day long. Mm-hmm. And then I went home and a couple hours later, I got a message. I got a picture that um, was sent across and um, it's hard for me to express how uh, strong I see you in your journey and the example that you're setting for so many people of how to deal with adversity. Um, All of the things that you've done since your cancer diagnosis um, are things that, you know, a lot of people would have trouble taking care of um, without cancer. So Mm -hmm. um, I respect you immensely. And I think that, you shaving your head and not just shaving your head and then covering it up or shaving your head and not being on um, a Facebook live video that's going to be seen by over 10,000 people. Um, (laughs) That takes bravery and it takes courage. So I respect you a lot. I love you. I love you too. Okay. So, um, so I'm bald. It'll be like this for a while. So I may wear a wig or two. You may see me blonde in a blonde wig eventually, but, um, who knows? So, um, 
I had treatment this week and Mo posted a picture of me sleeping because I was high on Benadryl and they give you Benadryl in the beginning of your treatment and it knocks me out. And so then he posted it and the post went crazy and I was like, oh my God, can a, can a girl sleep on Benadryl, high on Benadryl? So anyway, yesterday uh, Carl was here and we were working on stuff and then um, we went to go walk my dog, Sunga, because I got a new dog, well, in December. And so it's our family dog. Love you, Wit. And um, we came back, and I was hot and sweaty, and I had, like, a beanie on all day, and I have, like, hair here and there sticking out. And so I just said, fuck it, and Mo um, shaved my head. But I, I was crying, and the reason why I was crying was it's, a you know, I was, like, losing my hair. But my girls were crying, and then... Um, my Mena and Evie, my Lay and Malia were crying. And so that made it hard for me, but it, it gave me strength. And so, um, I was trying to, um, be strong. So anyway, after the hair was gone, I totally forgot that I was bald this morning. <laughs> and so I'm cooking people breakfast and I walk by the mirror and I was like, whoa. And so um, it's a little shocking when you first see me. But don't worry, I'm be wearing more makeup than I ever do. I got these big old earrings and I'll be wearing my eyelashes. So I will not be eyelash free. But um, yeah, so don't worry about me. And... Uh, yeah, I'm good. Thank you, Sia. I love you, Sia. So yeah, today we're going to be talking about uh, COVID-19. We're going to be talking to Dr. Samoa. And some people have sent in some questions for us to ask him. And what else? Um, the census. Um, good morning, Dora. Thank you. So we're going to be talking about the census and how important the census is because we need to be counted. And then uh, COVID-19, Dr. Samoa, who um, ha is working all weekend. And so um, we caught him at a break um, during his day. So um, really big shout out to all the uh, medical doctors and nurses and everybody that's taking care, uh, that is still working, police officers and and this and that. So good morning, Steph. Good morning, everybody who's on um, listening and watching my um, big bald head. <laughs> 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 my big bald head so that is our show today um this week i had a good week we just stayed stayed home wash your hands don't do anything um pretty much um i love that everybody's home because i i've been hearing the kids laugh and they're hardly ever home all together at the same time and so um just catching up on netflix i gotta watch um cj something madam cj walker is my next um, Netflix thing that I'll be watching this week. So let's all watch it and talk about it next week. How about that? And you, sir. Hi, Tammy. Uh, a lot of the same. I was home all week. Like most of the people, I get to work uh, remotely, a telecommute. So my commute is get out of the bed, wash my face, uh, brush my teeth, and <laughs> walk down the hall and sit down on my computer. It's uh, about a 30-second commute. Um, I'm loving that. I am loving a lot of the the way that people are sharing. I saw on TikTok they have <clears throat> it was a a lady walking down the street and she was calling out numbers. She's like B nineteen, B nineteen, and then when you the camera person panned over, there were <laughs> everybody was down on their driveways at the bottom of their driveways right. and seated, and there were people calling out, you know, bingo or you know, there right. it was a community bingo. Um, we had a couple different meetings through the Zoom or Google Hangouts mm -hmm. um, platforms this week. We've had a ton of uh, just creative ways to share space and spend time with one another. I think that uh, that's one of the benefits that's coming out of, of what we have to do because mm -hmm. of COVID. And we'll, we'll talk about that later. But I th what we're really trying to do is talk about the positive pieces of it. I mean, there's right. all of the, you know, the doom and gloom of what's going to happen, what could happen, um, projections, crazy projections, um, and some probably accurate projections. But at the same time, I think it needs to be flavored with some form of, you know, here are some of the good things coming out of it. So some of the good things for me this week, um, 
five five. Mm. My daughter Malia is back in our house. She came home last Yay. night. Yay! Uh, very bummed that her junior year of softball is is over before it started. Um, but happy to have her home. Happy right. to hear all the kids' voices, laughing, doing whatever in the house. Um, I cooked every meal through well, Friday. Look at you, Monday through Friday. Look at I prepared you. every meal and I lost a whole five pounds. I got uh, you know a few to go, thirty five to go, but uh, that's positive. Um, I'm reaching out through the phone to people that I haven't talked to in years, mm-hmm. uh, just randomly picking people out of my contacts and nice. saying, haven't talked to that person in X amount of years. Let me call them up. Let them know that I'm thinking of them. Tell them I love them. See what's going on in their life. Um, let's see. What else? I've got a lot of time to um, do administrative things for PBD. Um and we got the the mobile studio set up here so we could right. take over this portion of your house. Thank mm. you again. You welcome. Um, yeah, that's personally for me. Those are that's how my week went. I'm grateful. Um, shout out to the retail workers. So there's you know obviously the police and the critical infrastructure pieces of the public, um, you know the public programs like the you know police and and medical uh, personnel. But shout out to the retail workers that are out there selling all the items that uh, people are rushing to the stores. Whole nother topic there, but uh, retail workers are getting it done. They're they're selling and, and providing service to everybody that's going crazy in their stores. Um, so I want to make sure that we talk about them because there's a lot of those out there. There aren't a lot of businesses open right now, and they're still out there doing it. So yeah, that's my week. Yay. So um, good morning to everyone that's online. Taima Thompson, Dr. Tai Fatleava, good morning, Chicago. Um, Le Alope, good morning. Thank you for tuning in. Um, in a little bit, we're going to have Dr. Samoa on um, talking about COVID-19. If you're just tuning in, nothing's wrong with your screen. Yes, I am bald. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this week, there was, I mean, Everybody just pretty much stayed home, right? And we talked. To, oh, so I want to talk about the census because I talked about the census a lot. And so I wanted to talk about um, if you didn't or if you did, because I know you did get your um, census survey in the mail. Please go and fill it out, especially if you are a Pacific Islander, because we were so way undercounted um, in 2010, which is 10 years ago. And so um, it's really easy. There's nine questions. It's all confidential. Um, we, they just need to know um, how many people are in the house. And you're, you're, well, the most important thing is that you uh, fill out your nationality or your race. Is it that? It? You like, wh- there is a part where it says what race or, or nationality you are. And so you can check off the box. And then there's an empty box under there where you can write in, you know, um, Fijian, Tongan. Mm. I mean, if you don't see your island listed under nationality or race, please check the box and go write it in because um, we were undercounted and we're we're we could be missing funds or uh, miss. I don't know. Yeah. So there's a piece in there that says Pacific Islander, um, and then it has a portion like Naki saying to <clears throat> designate what type of Pacific Islander you are. So. Um, having specific information for your your group, your particular group, mm-hmm. is extremely important. Um, there, I know that there is actually a bubble to check for someone, right? <clears throat> but there are a ton of uh, a whole bunch of different groups and island uh, communities in the Pacific in, that are where you're you're from, mm-hmm. ethnic groups um, that are <clears throat> American citizens. Um, so we need to make sure that those uh, are not only counted, but they're counted in the right segment, the right category. Right. So um, make sure you fill it out. And there's all kinds. It's very, very confidential. They Nobody's going to come knocking in your house, at your door, unless you do not fill out the survey. Because somewhere in July, um, someone's going to come knock at your door if you haven't filled out the survey. They're not going to count the people. They're not going to judge you. They just need you to fill out the survey. Um, good morning, Alexander Amosa, who is checking in from Omaha, Nebraska. Good morning, uh, Tonga Fanoti. Uh, happy Sunday, uh, Sister Mona. And Brother Frank, good morning. 
So quick note on um, <clears throat> two things on people knocking on your door this year. One, if you already did it online and somebody's knocking on your door about the census, that's not somebody from the census because right. they wouldn't. you wouldn't be on the list of doors to be knocked on if you had done it online. So right. know that. The second piece of this is we don't know what the effect of COVID-19 is going to be on um, census workers going uh, door to door mm-hmm. and trying to get people to um to register so doing this in your home safely um not exposing yourself Mm -hmm. on your computer is really the best way to go and like i said one of the layers of uh insurance that people do register for the census is workers going door to door and like i said we don't know what's going to happen with COVID 19 things change every day um in reference to that so really the best thing to do is get this thing done without people knocking on your door because we don't even know if they are going to knock on your door. Right, right. And then, so um, one of the things that we were talking about before was the questions that, they, and I just wanted to, I guess the U.S. Census Bureau already sets the questions up. Like for 2030, they're starting now on, you know, they research the questions, they do a bunch of surveys. So for 2020, the questions were already set in 2018. They have a big survey. It's not uh, politically led or it's not racial. You know what I mean? It's like totally, totally like, I don't know, no judgment or whatever. Good morning, Jean. So the questions are already set in 2018. In order to get a question onto the 2030, you would need to come up with data to send the U.S. Census Bureau uh, with facts and stuff like why we need this question, why it's in dire need. So um, I know we were talking about that uh, probably a week or two ago about how the questions get on the census. And also that um, you can answer and um, go online and answer the census questions or online until July 31st, right? Right, but as soon as possible. That's but the, the best really, way to think yeah. about it is do this as quickly as, as possible. As quickly as possible. And so July 31st, and then I was, um, I asked questions and, and research and spoke to people. And um, at the end of the year, December 31st, 2020, the uh, results go to the White House, right? Mm-hmm. They go to the White House. They have to send their data to the White House. And then the White House does what they do. And then April 1st of 2020, all that information gets distributed to your county and your whatever leaders or whatever. And so it's probably around that time we will get the results. But we really, really, really want to get Pacific Islanders like counted, counted, counted. Like my mom sent me her um, snapshot of her census um, mail that she got. So I filled out hers. And, and so it's, there you go. Yeah, this may be in some in some senses this is more important than voting. They're both really important and we should do both. But mm-hmm. when you think about the programs and all of the uh <clears throat> things that that the services and, and those things that are especially our kids are going to get, um it's going to be based off of the numbers that are visible to the government and mm-hmm. if we don't, you know, if you don't uh take the census then you're invisible. And we've got a whole bunch of people Exactly. Not just in the Bay Area, but we've got a whole bunch of people across the country that are invisible at this point. Um, and that's kind of what we had talked about in 2010. We believe that we didn't get an accurate count. Well, now is the opportunity. The opportunity is right now um, to fix what happened in 2010. Right, right. So get, get the paper out, fill it out, go online. If you need help, please get a hold of someone who's, I don't know, computer Blah, blah, blah. Like, nope. I, I have Mena so I, and yeah. Mac. So whenever I have computer questions, I have my kids um, to help me. And so, um, like my mom, she couldn't understand how to get online. And she doesn't have a computer. So she sent it to me, and I'm going to fill it out for her. There you so go. So for those of you that are in households where the head of the household is not computer savvy, they're not, you know, technically inclined, mm-hmm. help them out. Yes. Help them, yes, um, please, help please. them get through those. And it's not, it's, it is not really... Um, detailed in the sense that it, it doesn't take a long time to fill out. Um, and there's not any research that you need to do for the people that are in the home. So uh, there are going to be households where the head of household is not, uh, there may be a language issue. There may be a, um, I don't know, technology issue. If you're in one of those homes, help those people out, help them get that information filled out. Yay. 
I just wanted to shout out Lynn Pilasama, who is with SEDC, is tuned in. Uh, Vania Knowlton, my niece in Washington, stay in the house. Don't leave. Don't leave. Um, who else is on here? Um, it's crazy. This me. is one of those. Um, and for those of us that were old enough um, to remember uh, 9-11, mm-hmm. this is one of those things where 20 years from now, 30 years from now, uh, people are going to say, you know, do you remember what happened? What did your family do? Remember when, you know, the, all these COVID-19 things were happening? Mm-hmm. Um, because you think about 9-11, you think about some of the other things. Um, I don't ever remember casinos closing ever. en masse. Like that was one of those things where you just look at it like Disneyland, mm-hmm. the NBA canceling their season. That's crazy. Uh, casinos, entire, all Las Vegas, the strip isn't lit up. Like that's just crazy. That's insane to think of the scope of what COVID-19 is right. doing with, with the world right. right now. That's It's too crazy to me. So um, Las Vegas is shut down. Um, we have El Feely and Cindy Fiso and Tony Fiso. Okay, my Fiso family is online. Good morning, Seattle. <laughs> Stay indoors. Don't go out. Wash your hands. Um, we had a Fiso reunion that was um, supposed to be in June. And we canceled it because of COVID-19. And so um, I'm kind of bummed about that. And so uh, we were, it's all my first cousins. We haven't seen each other forever. And so um, for, of course, safety and health reasons, we canceled it. So big shout out to my Fiesel family that's tuned in. Um, A lot of family reunions. I seen somebody that was um, getting married and their wedding got canceled, but they went and eloped and then like filmed the thing online of them getting, you know, getting married. So it was beautiful. I mean, we are, we are pretty, you know, we have electronics, we have Facebook, we got TikTok. Everybody's being, you know, keeping busy. Um, I downloaded TikTok. And so there's like a whole bunch of people on dancing and stuff. So I love it. Good morning, Monica. Uh, Texas is in the house. Good morning, Texas. And so um, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And then uh, Stacy Lepanga Scanlon. Good morning, Stacy. So a lot, a lot of people have been being very creative online. Like It's inspiring to see like social platforms, like uh, especially TikTok and I don't know if it, whether to thank you, um, Neil, or to not thank you right. for introducing me to TikTok because I see all kinds of amazing uh, videos on there, and there, you know, makes me laugh, makes me cry, you know, makes me yes. feel. Yes. But then it makes me cry at the very end when I look at how long how long I've been on that app before I turn it off. Um, I mean, I'll actually just get on the thing when I have mm-hmm. a spare hour right. and just spend the hour there. So I got to be careful with that. But the things that are on there and um, the humor, the creativity, um, the the way that people are are interacting and seeing. I love like, it. The big the the uh, <laughs> the big groups getting together uh, online and then they're going through different. I know, love a it. Certain topic. Um, there's a lot of, there's all these good things that are coming out and everybody needs to hear those as well. Because if you turn on, um, CNN or Fox or MSNBC or any of those, and you watch that long enough, Mm -hmm. you're, it's, that is something that you need some, uh, you need something to sprinkle in there that's positive. So you don't get just soaked up in the, uh, negative negativity and doomsday that right. if you watch that long enough, you're going to think the end of the world's like an hour away. I know it's so negative. I love TikTok. That is my new addiction. And then I always say, Oh, okay, good night. I'm going to sleep. And then two hours later, I'm still on TikTok scrolling. And I think, I think I may give in and do, you know, with Leah Boasa, who is, um, our one of our PBD crews. She's in. She'll do TikTok if I beg her to. And so, um, good morning, Gina. Sister Gina is in far, far away Richmond, California. And so, um, I I love TikTok. And then Italy, Italy has been doing. Okay, I got to shout out Mike uh, Juan who is watching and Christina Romans who are my my peeps from work. Um, and so. Um, Good morning, and I love you guys. Okay, so um, Italy, you want to talk about Italy because you posted that video this week. Yeah, there was. So Italy is one of those. Um, they're paying a huge price. I think the death toll or the the rate, the mortality rate um, in Italy is the highest <clears throat> um, in the world of countries right now. Part of it has to do with their aging population. Um, 
there was a whole bunch of different things, the, the capacity of their uh, medical infrastructure, but some of the things where they have entire blocks singing the same song. So you have these, you know, six, seven, eight, nine story buildings and everybody's out on their balcony singing the same songs. Um, if that doesn't make you feel, I don't know what will. They have, uh, I saw a video of two guys on a balcony next to each other and they got baseball gloves and they're throwing a baseball back and forth. That's um, awesome. Playing catch. And one of my friends who's a big baseball fan said, yeah, but you need a left-hander to make that work because that way they're throwing, they're both throwing with their outside hand on the balcony. <laughs> um, let's see. I posted a, a video of a guy came, went out to his balcony with a keyboard, right? Right, right. With a keyboard and he started playing a Celine Dion song and like two, two balconies over and one down, um, a guy came out with his saxophone mm -hmm. and they both played together and people started cheering and clapping. That was so awesome. Um, those are the kind of things that you need to seek out. You need to find, you need to see that and get that positive energy because I've watched that video like, I don't know, five, six times. Yeah. Yeah. I like that video. There's a whole bunch of, um, there's a whole bunch of videos that are just, they make you smile and they're positive and, you know, everybody's just trying to be creative and entertain their se themselves while they're being locked out, locked down because of the COVID-19. So I'm really enjoying everybody's video. Um, Neo Veva, you should go follow him on TikTok because he has some really good ones, funny ones. And so um, him and Leah did one. Good morning, Leah. Um, Leah Boasa is checking in from Richmond, California. And so um, Neil has some really good, I mean, there's all kinds of positive vibes out there that's going on that'll make you feel good. Oh, one thing we did do was um, um, the uh, Pacifica Talanoa. Pacifica Talanoa is uh, a program, program that we started, started on Friday. Friday. Um, um, it is facilitated by Neil Veeva, and it is a virtual community where we will meet with uh we had what four? Yes, four people on, uh -huh. um, and we just sat and talked about our weeks, uh, talked about what's going on in our lives, challenges, um, inspiring things that we saw, what we're stressed about. Kind of a support group, and again, it it, it comes out of um, it comes out of COVID nineteen putting us in our houses, right? Mm -hmm. So if we're in our houses, the the beauty of the internet and technology best way to think yes. about it so you see everybody's face and their facial expressions and so we talked about the anxiety of oh my god do i have enough food that's my big thing because i have kids and um and, and there is enough food like talking to um reading stuff that where gross big grocery um uh, like safeway and other food people are saying that there is enough food. It's just people are, are hoarding. And so, but my big anxiety this week was cause I have kids in the house and it's like, do I have enough food for my babies? Are they, are we going to starve? You know? So every day I'm like, I need to go to the store. And my kids are like, mom, that's enough. You know? So that, and that's my anxiety. So I got to talk through it with uh, Pacifica Talanoa, which was awesome. And we were on for an hour. I mean, it can go as long as you want or as long as you need. But it's awesome. Good morning, Lilia. Good morning. And so there's a lot of people checking in from Richmond, California. Let me just say that must be our hot spot this morning. And so um that that was that was my whole thing was the anxiety of of do I have enough you know only because I'm watching the stinky news and everybody's hoarding everything so that that's it that's that's my big thing so there you go save us some food people save us some food that's all I'm saying good morning Apollinar yeah from a, the retail perspective because I am in the retail industry um, the especially the giants the Kroger the Safeway the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, Amazon, Walmart, uh, Costco. Um, these companies are saying they have supplies. The supply chain has right. product in it. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of getting it to the shelf because the shelf is getting emptied so fast right. that retailers are having a hard time putting the merchandise on the shelf. So understand this, everybody. There is it's not a shortage in terms of supply. There's They're having a hard time getting it to the shelf. Right. If we just calm down and buy normally, the product will continue to be there. But it's hard 
And my wife talked about this. Like she knows that because I've talked to her about that after I get off conference calls. Um, I talked to her about that, but she says it's hard because when you're in the store and everybody's grabbing like, you know, 50 of everything, um, she said, I grabbed one item because, you know, because everybody was grabbing it and she didn't grab, you know, like 50 of them, but she did grab an item that we probably didn't need because <clears throat> the feeling of that was there, even though she knew um, that there's plenty of product in the supply line. So um, understand that everybody, there is plenty of product. Um, it just takes time to get to the shelf because we're pulling it off there so fast. I know, I know. So, um, you know, when you go shopping, but I have seen people go like to Costco and the line is around the corner. And so, you know, I mean, that's because we can't fill the shelves fast enough, but there is enough stuff and you just ration and just buy what you need and everything will be okay. And so, you know, there's a lot of liquor. Go go to the liquor store. <laughs> buy up there. You'll stay drunk for a couple of days and before you know it, the stores are empty. <laughs> So drink, drink, drink. There you go. There you go. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Wow, everybody's checking in. You know what? The um, If you are going to go tune into church, um, Lucky, you know, what is it? Win City in Las, Win the City in Las Vegas. Uh, Pastor Lucky Siaki has, he's d been doing 30 days every day. He does a word like he did hope and love and faith. And so it is really really um has been helping me get through the day so um and if he's not for you a bunch of churches are, are going online um so get your word online but go to win the city pastor lucky siaki and first lady carolyn uh caroline siaki they have um really good he's really funny he's very sports oriented and he's a 49er fan so you know come with your team he's gonna come at you so Barbara, Missy Becca, it's crazy out there and people can be very selfish. On a good note, you look beautiful. <laughs> Thanks, Barbara. In our community, all stores close early to enable cleaning and restocking. Oh, that's awesome. Good morning, Barbara. Yeah, we just need people to to just be um, be uh, nice. Christina Fa'amafoy. Talofa, look at me, I hit all the vowels. <laughs> Big shout out to Pastor Fatleava for teaching me how to hit all the vowels. And uh, Tina, girlfriend, hey girlfriend. And so um, are we going to hit, uh, are we taking a break? It's 1034. How about that? I have been rambling on this long and the time has just been flying by. So are we taking a break and coming back with Dr. Samoa? We can do that. Well, you're listening to the FICA podcast. I am Naki. With me, as always, is Galolo. And we'll be right back. And uh, yeah, come back to FICA with us. Here, just freeze. And it looks, just like, it looks like it's the internet's it's, problem. It's the internet's <laughs> problem. We're having a hard time with the internet because, you know, we're in my house. <laughs> yeah. When you're in my house. I don't have that much internet. Had I known, I had to pay for internet. We'll be right back. <laughs> Yo, what's up, y'all? It's your boy Q. Joe Sam. From Island Block Radio. Y'all are tuned in to the FICA Podcast. Every Sunday yeah. at 10 to 12 noon. Yeah. Stop it. What's Come wrong? On. You got to stay strong and know that everything will be all right. Be all right. Sit back be all right. and cool. Do what you do. Start to rearrange your mind. Outside of facing these temptations. Wondering will I ever I make I it? Ever Sit back and cool. Do what you do. Uh, uh, yeah. Look. And everything you do, let me know when your time's up. Cause I probably go crazy, screaming life sucks. A crazy life, I probably couldn't even grind much. Gotta be patient with your cause, give it some time. Look, I'm on a different height, trying to live a different life. The game left, so I'm out here trying to get it right. All these clouds, man, clearing up my eyesight. Fresh air, sunny day, so I know it's all right. And the mood right. On a school night, living on the cool hype. Grown man business, ain't worried about what the fools like. I'm on a Another chapter, a life filled with laughter. The green money, my family, and yeah, that's what I'm after. I'm chasing dollars, chasing dreams. I done this out of love, putting hate out easily. I do this for my family, was never in it for the streets. Tell them haters to relax, cause ain't no need for the no beef. No matter what's wrong, you gotta stay strong and know that everything will be alright. Right. Sit back and cool, do what.
what you do Start to rearrange your mind I'm tired of facing these temptations Wondering will I ever make it Sit back and cool, do what you do Finish lining in my shine, yeah. I ain't finished stop here. Punchlines will probably leave you drop quick. I gotta get it, I'm confident. Cause my family, they knew I was ready. Guards up, keeping my game steady. And my whole fam heavy. And them haters feel it. Got them niggas feeling low. Peanut butter jelly when I spit the realest quotes. And niggas probably hurt. Trying to have my whole family flying in the birds. The ignorance around me ain't never being hurt. Smile with your chin, I forever feel it. Bless your hurt. No matter what's wrong, you got Stay strong and know that everything will be all right. Okay, well, as that's mom. We're on the phone. <laughs> so we're back. <laughs> See what happens when you're working from home? We had to put the studio into the house, and Mena, can you uh, take Lai off? Oh, okay. There you go. This, so, welcome back to the FICA podcast. It's, I am Naki, with me in my dining room is Carl. Good morning. And Timana. <laughs> good morning. So, good morning, Molly Jordan, my baby. Good morning, Shirley. Happy Sunday, Pastor Fatleava, good morning, Tina, Tima, oh, Tama and Tina. Good morning, happy Sunday. Tiff Hayward, California in the house. Good morning. So um, we have uh, started our show. Uh, if you don't know, we moved us into my dining room because the building that we were in um, is shut down because of COVID-19. So before they completely shut down, we ran in there, grabbed some equipment, and then ran back out. <laughs> and so we set up in my dining room. So we are currently in the Moli residence. Uh, good morning, Amosa. Good morning, Tiff. I love you. And so here we are. We in a couple of minutes, we're going to have um, Dr. Reno Samoa. We asked earlier in the week or maybe a couple of days ago if you can send us some questions so that we can ask Dr. Samoa um, maybe questions that you might um you haven't um, had gotten questions about or or questions that may or may not pertain to COVID-19. And so Dr. Samoa is going to answer some of that questions and kind of probably break some of the false information that's going on. And so we appreciate Dr. Samoa. Of course, um, he's, you know, given us um so much time we just taken so much time and he's a doctor so he's crazy crazy busy so we appreciate the time that he takes and he does it because he wants us to be informed and so we appreciate him good morning shell patrick good morning sister mayoa good morning eva phil feel good cut support your local pasifica business he's kind of out right now so um everybody's closed down for covid but follow him on instagram and facebook and uh feel good cuts not his personal page <laughs> um cheyenne tuma wait hold on cheyenne tuma nouveau who tama look at me look what you did all right so we are gonna um top of the morning we're gonna go to dr samoa I'm checking in with our producer, following our visuals. <laughs> so we'll be right back. Um, listen to um, our interview we did yesterday. We got Dr. Samoa while he was on a break, and he's a doctor, so we appreciate the time that he did. So um, here we go. Hello. On the phone, we have Dr. Reynolds Samoa, who is calling, well, we're calling him in Los Angeles, and he is um, an expertise in um and correct me if i'm wrong appetite modulation yeah. di diabetes thyroid yes. p 
pediatric endocrinology. There you go. There you go. So nice job. Thank, nice. <laughs> thank you for taking the time to answer some questions that, that you know, you um, that some people have had um, questions about that we want to just make sure that um, they're not misinformed or or how um, we can help them get informed. Yeah, we like I said, uh, we did get a uh, pretty good response. We got a bunch of questions, um, and so in sense of in the uh, sense of time, and I know you're a busy guy looking at uh, at the windshield um, and spending time with us. I'm just going to dive into it, um, and then we can kind of discuss it as we go. Um, <clears throat> one of the things we hear a lot about is the term "bend the curve," um, and then so looking at the trajectory of China and Italy. Um, are we ahead of that, do you think? Are we even with it? Um, I would be shocked if we were behind it because I would think we would learn from it. But where do you think we are in terms of trajectory and that bend in the curve and compared to China and Italy's uh, uh, history? We're, yeah, we're nowhere near. So it's called, so the curve speaks to the higher the number of people that are diagnosed, um, the sharper the curve. Mm. Yeah. And so... Uh, the the what we're finding out is that with this particular type of illness, um, it's it's when the majority of the population gets sick at once, um, that's when dangerous things happen, you know. And so, uh, flattening the curve means that people are still getting infected, but they're not getting infected all at once, you know. Uh, so they're they're slowing the transmission. Um, uh, so that the population is still getting cases, but not very, they're, they're not, it's, it's not as fast. Right. So, um, we're, we're nowhere near flattening our curve. Um, China and South Korea seem to show some flattening. Um, Japan is eking that way. Uh, and so the interesting about, China and, and South Korea was they had two very different approaches. Um, and so a lot can be learned about the, the different ways they, they went about treating or uh, managing the virus. Um, Italy and Iran, you know, their, their curves are still pretty steep, um, but it looks like they're nearing their peak. So Hopefully, fingers crossed, they start flattening soon. Um, uh, the U.S., we just started. I don't think our curves are anywhere near, like, reaching peak. Do you think the, um, yeah, in that note, do you think that the measures that um, shelter in place, the national um, edict to stay at home, those kind of things, being so new right now, if it's going to affect it, do you think we see that effect in a week, in a couple of weeks? Like, what do you think the controls that have been put in place recently are going to do to that effort? Uh, you know, if, if the other countries are any indication, uh, it looks like they should work. Um, you know, and so China, and mind you, I, I get people's distrust about how they manage the, the condition early, but as of yesterday, uh, they had no new cases, um, which, you know, is the first time in a long time for them. Mm. Uh, so, and South Korea, you know, they, they have been putting in measures for a good four weeks now, I think. And so the tide is turning uh, in those places. So it should give us hope that these initiatives such as uh, Safer at Home and uh, Working from Home, uh, they, should help, they should help turn the tide. Yeah, and, um, you know, South Korea was was ready. These viral epidemics, these viral pandemics, they're not new to um, uh, other parts of the world, like uh, SARS, you know, the um, sudden acute respiratory syndrome virus. What else was there? There was um, MERS, the Medi oh, Middle Eastern respiratory syndrome. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and so I think South Korea got you know they they got pretty wiped out from uh from that MERS uh, uh viral pandemic and they learned a lot from it you know and so their their measures aren't as they're not as martial law 
as China's was, uh, they relied heavily on testing. And so they did, um, they, they test about 5,000 people for every million. Wow. You know, in the U.S., we test about 70 per million. So, Do you think that's you know, capacity, the rate of our testing? Or why do you think that uh, that's so different? Yeah, you know, it's, it's getting the tests out there and making it a priority. Um, you know, people keep saying, well, there's not enough resources. You know, it shut down large parts of our country for, for a good two weeks now. So I don't know when you're going to use our resources. Like no other, no other country in the world has as many resources as the United States. So to say that we don't have the capacity to make testing widespread, mm -hmm. uh, because you don't have to have it, you don't have to test everybody. But the way epidemiology works is you test a sample, a representative sample, to give you a better idea of what you're dealing with. You know, I wish they would have made testing more available for medical staff. Um, it seems to me that that group should should be tested regularly, especially since there's a. It seems that uh, rest, uh, healthcare workers seem to get more severe symptoms. All these things, you know, I, 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 I get the reason why it's not out. I just don't understand why there's not a stronger push. Sure. I guess, you know, that to your point, the keeping the people healthy that are going to keep us healthy, they're going to keep the general population healthy would seem like that needs to be a bigger priority. Um, one of my one of the, my wife is a geneticist and um, I had asked her, hey, we're going to be talking to Dr. Samoa again. Are there questions that you had? And one of the ones that she thought, um, that she has some some knowledge of, but not enough, was the the discussion about the the virus mutating um, and being yeah. different strains at that point. Can you kind of walk the uh, the listeners through the what is the mutation, um, why it's important, and then how it affects the creation of vaccines to respond to it? Uh, that's a great question. So, so from what I understand, uh, there was there's a couple of reports. Um, probably the, the most well-studied one is the one in Spain. It looks like Spain has um, identified a, a completely separate strain from the one that originated in Wuhan, China. COVID is the disease. Like, the COVID stands for Coronavirus Disease 19. Um, uh, but the actual virus family is uh, SARS. Uh, SARS-CoV-2 is this particular strain. So the reason why you need to know whether or not a virus is mutated is because uh, what you're trying to do is replicate um, something that looks like the virus uh, so that our immune system can recognize it and attack anytime it comes in contact with, with the virus it'll you know stimulate the immune system to attack it so a mutation um, everything that can replicate uh, has DNA uh, so you know humans plants bacteria and viruses the viral DNA uh, uh, is how the virus replicates itself and that's the uh, that's the information it uses to make a copy of itself so if there's a, a change in the code, then the virus can replicate it to something completely different. You know? And so the, uh, from what I understand, the vaccines, um, they, you know, it has to look a lot like the virus. You have to know uh, what the mutations produce uh, so that you can make a more effective vaccine. Because, you know, I think, I think there was reports in China that people were getting um, reinfected, uh, and so it was hard to say whether or not this was a um, a reactivation of the previous infection, or if this was an entirely new strain that people were getting reinfected with. With these other reports coming about, uh, it's possible that people are getting reinfected with this other strain. That's uh, I think that's really <clears throat> what people have. Uh... That's the concern, right? Like, is there two yeah. different two different monsters out there that need to be that need to be dealt with? Um, and I think that hopefully this educates a lot of people 
um, as to when you hear that term, it's mutated. What does it mean? Um, what does it mean in terms of vaccines? And then it could be, like you said, we may have read already read something that had to had to uh, that related to it, but we just weren't aware of there possibly being a second strain out there. Naki, go ahead. Okay, and then um, a question is: uh, What is the most missed issue for people as they try to protect themselves? The most missed issue, um, I would say, staying home. Yeah. Like I just had to, I don't want to say yell, but I had a very stern talk with my parents last night. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they wanted, you know, they wanted to. They're in, they're in Pierce County right now, mm. so they had the plans to go visit some really close friends of ours in, in King County. Uh-huh. You know, where where the the outbreak is higher. Yeah. And I was like, no, no. Yeah. Um, like. Um, right now, that's not a good idea, and you know it's it's hard. It's hard for their their generation hasn't really seen this ep- this kind of epidemic that's that's respiratory spread very often. So you know they're they're the most fake stay at home people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like. They went to go visit today. Today they're resting. Finally they're resting. But yesterday they were with my um, um, with my aunt, my aunt. And the day before that they were with um, some some good friends of theirs. Uh-oh. You know, and so it's it's really a, I get it. I get it. You know that's that's the nature of the village. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, and so we we have to be diligent because, like I said, the tide is turning. Italy and Iran, they didn't put in these measures until much later, you know. Yeah. Um, and so there's been, you know, what what they're what they're saying is that the U.S. is about 15 days behind other countries. And so what we're seeing in Italy, we're about 15 days behind that. Oh wow. You know, so that's why there's there's been stronger um, uh, restrictions as of late because you know we're trying to be more aggressive than italy was Mm -hmm. um to help flatten our curve before it gets to those rates that italy is seeing so the term real quick um the term uh you know flatten the curve bend the curve that kind of thing is the end result of that is trying to keep um trying to keep the resources available for the people who actually are sick and not flood the system with um, people who aren't, but, you know, kind of blocking yeah. the, those that actually need the care. Is that one of the big effects of, of flattening the curve and having less and being able to kind of sort through the people that actually need care? Yeah. You know, like it, it's a heartbreaking report that came out of Italy that in, in certain hospitals, uh, patients over 80 were just, they weren't admitted, you know, they were just left to die. So, you know, that's what happens when you overwhelm a system, you know. And the other thing that we're learning from Italy is that, you know, this has to be vetted. And the reports are coming so fast and furious. Um, you always have to, like, check your sources. But but one source is, is saying that 99% of the cases that have died in Italy had another condition, like diabetes and oh. heart disease and cancer. Uh-huh. So those comorbid conditions are... are a risk factor for mortality right uh right in your wheelhouse right yeah. live, live healthier life um I, I did read that that and it made me think of of our community obesity is one of the um you know kind of the risk layers and you layer age and obesity and hypertension and all those things in um our populations at greater risk in my opinion than um other groups so hopefully we can uh we can live more in line of what I hear you talk about. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Nikki. Oh, um, do you see it playing out any differently now um, than you saw it a few weeks ago? Uh, no, when we talked a couple weeks ago, I think we said it was going to get worse. Yeah. Uh, numbers are going to go up. And, um, and so we're kind of there. Uh, the question is, how can we flatten um you know, with all these measures. Mm-hmm. So, you know, um, I, I press upon people. I don't have a choice, you know, 
um, you know, our dog was attacked by a mountain lion on Tuesday. Oh, wow. so I thought he was dead, and we took him to the emergency vet place, and and uh, you know, he's they had to put in a, a, a tracheostomy tube for him. Oh, wow! And so you know, I I would rather be home and staying safe. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm I'm at work, and you know, I don't know what I'm getting exposed to on a day-to-day basis. And so I don't have that choice. Right. So I hope people understand that sacrifices people are making are so they can stay home, right. you know, so that we don't, we don't end up in chaos. And so that's, that's what I'm hoping. And, you know, I'm going to lean on the fact that our oceanic sisters and brothers are, uh, understand that we move together. Right. And so, yeah, there's there's people on the front line, but you know their their work means nothing if you're getting exposed and and getting sick in high numbers. And so we we have to move together. And Dr. Samoa, so like people that have to go to work, like yourself and the uh, police officers, they're out in public. Is there anything they should do when they come home to you know their family that's quarantined? Is there anything special that you do or they should do to maybe not because ex- you're out in the public and it, they, you know what I mean, and not to expose right. them to anything? You just have to take precautions. You got to mm-hmm. wash your hands. I think you know. I usually, well, let's <laughs> just. My family makes me take a shower as yeah. soon as I can. Um, and then, you know, you, you just adhere to good ha- uh, good hygiene. Uh, make sure you throw your clothes into the wash and um, and make sure everything's wiped down regularly. Those same precautions you would do when you're at work. Okay. Awesome. Shower. Stay clean. <laughs> um, as PIs, how do our home remedies stack up against conventional knowledge i don't know actually i I really don't know i i i I would recommend though if you're having any type of respiratory symptom that you bypass the traditional healing and go straight to get evaluated okay you know there's i don't know if if other cultures have this but some people have they have this thing where they steam you yeah put you You over the boiling pot like the yes. steam mm-hmm. so they do the steam and so you know if you have if you're having acute respiratory distress syndrome you're just putting yourself at risk for dying from uh, respiratory uh, failure so you gotta there's a lot of wisdom in, in our medicine in that condition though you have to I think you have to go in yes the question came in um, on our Facebook page. What do we do if and when we are confirmed other than quarantine? So obviously you're going to get direction from your physician on specific things, but what what kind of things would you look, would a person do um, other than quarantine if they end up getting diagnosed? Uh, you know, you, you treat it like the, you treat it symptomatically. Um, there is a question and, and you know, most of most of the studies came out of uh, Italy and, and Iran. Is, is the using uh, ibuprofen? Yeah, some people are saying don't take ibuprofen. Yeah, and so there's there's some small reports that suggest that it might worsen the respiratory failure. Oh. Uh, and so be mindful. You know, you know, if you get if you're diagnosed and confirmed with with um, COVID, that you probably don't want to use those types of uh, uh, analgesic. So, but. But, you know, and, and you would take precautions as well. You know, as long as you're you're able to breathe okay and treat your symptoms, uh, just proceed the way your doctor's telling you to and stay inside. And then as soon as uh, any kind of respiratory difficulty develops, you you go, you know, you, you inform them and, um, and get evaluated. So um, I read something today on the Internet and I thought, well, it must be true because it's on the Internet. And then, <laughs> <laughs> right after that, I said, hey, I'm going to be on the phone with Dr. Samoa. <laughs> I can straighten this out um, pretty quickly. But I was reading an article that said that the virus lives or <clears throat> can end up in your throat first before it gets to your lungs. And there was a lot of talk of um, drinking hot like tea or coffee or soups. Uh, gargling with uh, any different kinds of uh, salt water. I mean, there's a bunch of different things, but the, it just talked about 
the virus being in your throat and warm liquids helping with that and then gargling with like salt water and those kind of things uh, regularly so that if you do have it, um, you can keep it from getting to your lungs. Is that like make any sense or what do you think about that? I don't I don't think that's I don't think that's confirmed. Okay. You know, and so will it hurt? No. So if that's something you want to do because that's what you've always done, mm-hmm. um, I don't see how that would. I don't see how that would hurt. But as far as it being a confirmed as, method or something, right? Yeah, right. I'm not aware that it would do anything. Okay. Straight from the Hippocratic oath: first, do no harm. Right. <laughs> and Doctor Samwat, does the weather make a difference? Like, if it's because I talked to somebody in Vegas, and they're like, "Oh, I can't wait till it gets hot again because then the virus will." die faster or something like that does that even make sense not that i'm aware of like some some viral pandemics they still spread in the summer as well okay um so yeah i'm not i'm not aware of that okay so thank you for answering questions that came in i mean there was a lot of them but they all i think you've answered all of them so i know you're busy and you want to get home to your family but we appreciate your time um is there anything you want to get out to your parents that are probably listening and are probably (laughs) trying to find a local bingo (laughs) stay home home. thank you so so much for your time we appreciate that you take the time to answer our call (laughs) and answer the questions that people have have been having thank you dr samuel thank you dr samuel i would imagine that uh you're facing a lot better traffic than normal everybody's got better traffic now oh yeah can i say something yes. sure absolutely in this, in this time of, of um isolation and people going nuts um your your show has been able to sort of keep people informed um and reach people that mm, traditional medicine cannot reach so you know i think the difference between this this pandemic now in, in a pandemic 20 years ago is that there's voices like you um like your show that can help uh, uh calm the, the the public um you know and so the work you guys do by no means um is it any less than what i do and so thank you so much for for giving our our people a um a calm resounding place to voice and uh, talk about things that they don't feel comfortable talking about in other in other forums. Well, thank you very much. Um, that was what this episode's all about: is trying to get information out there, good information. And um, you are the part of the episode where yeah. we're trying to clear things up. Um, and then you know the other pieces we're talking about positive things that people are doing um, as a result of you know being home homeschooling uh, whatever you know there's just a lot of good things going out there too and we don't think that those get um, shared but anytime we get to share space with you um, I hope that you know we had talked about this becoming kind of a monthly thing and then things are moving so fast we thought well maybe we can uh, grab him you know it's only been two weeks since you've been <laughs> on but things change so quickly we think that um, like you said that we're probably reaching some of the people that the mainstream media um, isn't going to reach and, and our community is kind of a, a tight-knit group so hopefully we are doing that and again it's, it's an honor to share space with you we thank you for calling in thank you Dr. Samoa thank you and we're back. You are listening to the FICA podcast and you're watching the FICA podcast on live. Um, that was Dr. Reno Samoa. Um, we so appreciate he took our call yesterday while he was working. And so he took time out to answer questions and to help um, with people um, that had followers that had questions. Um, also, before that, we had a song. It was um, by Hi Guy Lai, and the song was Stay Strong. He is a Bay Area um, Samoan artist. Um, so look him up on um, all social media outlets. He's on SoundCloud and you know uh, YouTube, and he's an up and coming artist. So you know, look him up. Pretty soon, you're gonna have to pay for his music. <laughs> and so um, I just wanted to shout out some people who are watching. And nothing's wrong with your screen. I am bald. Uh, Professor Levelasi Loyan. Good morning, Molesi Junior. Sang Polutel. That is my mother-in-law's maiden name. We're probably related. 
Um, Yvonne Moly, Alaska is in the house. Uh, Emmanuel Leota, Pete Masoli, uh, my boyfriend, Neo, Priscilla, um, who else? Uh, Tennessee, Tawai Lefiti, and Eli with the um, music, music box. box. He's on every Friday. Go download the Nice app. Um, check him out. He plays a lot of uh, island reggae and reggae music. And download the Nice app, and he's on every Friday. So tune him in. He's also a DJ and an MC, so he, yes, if you're looking he is. for either of those services, Eli is your guy. Eli is your guy. Oh, my God. Molesi, hello. Yes. Now, after I read it all out, I was like, <laughs> I know that person. And so, yeah. So, hi, Guy Lai. Go check him out. Go check out all his music. He has videos on YouTube. Um, he's an up-and-coming artist. Dr. Samoa, we so, so appreciate your time. And then, um, who else? Uh, from the Dr. Samoa standpoint, it's just nice to have a professional on to clear up, like, I heard this. Is it true? Um, is this true? All those kind of yes. rumors. The internet is good at passing information. It's also good at passing misinformation. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Dr. Samoa. Thank you, Dr. Samoa. So do you, if, if you are home and you're wondering where to go, if you are pregnant and you are a senior 60 years old, and older, there are a lot of stores that open up an hour before they open up to the public. And they let these, if you're, I don't know, seen, like I said, a senior or pregnant or some kind of what? So, um, hello. Yeah, I don't know if we call them at risk shoppers, but yes. there are um, people that can have a hard time dealing with crowds. Um, and, you know, really it's actually competition in the aisles right now to get things right. and being able to move and being able to reach and all those kind of things. Um, the retail industry has recognized this is something that, and I don't, I'm not positive that it came from social media, but it's one of those things that, that became a big push on social media and the retailers have responded by giving the, these people who need their own time to shop, um, they're doing it. And then it's not like the little mom and pop shops. It's Safeway, Target. Um, big, big stores. Yeah. And so they let you, it's, and let me just list uh, some stores that are letting um, um, our elders or, or some people, Albertsons, oh, let me guess. Albertsons um, in the Bay Area, 7 to 9 a.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays, the company is reserving time uh, for those vulnerable shoppers. And then um, Dollar General, um, they let people in an hour before Fresh Market, where I don't even know where Fresh Market is. I never heard of them. But they let you in um, an hour before Gelson's. Where's Gelson's? Do we have a Gelson's? No. That's okay. The Midwest. Uh, Mother's Market, they'll let you in early. Safeway, 7 to 9 a.m. If you get there early, they will let you in. Not everybody, like, you know, the elders and stuff like that. Stop and Shop Target starting Wednesday. Um, they'll reserve the first hour of shopping each Wednesday at stores nationwide for vulnerable guests. Very good wording. Uh, Velarda Supermarket starting Wednesday. Also, Whole Food Market and... Uh, Costco. I mean, tons and tons of stores are um, letting elders or vulnerable shoppers in an hour before. So that's, you know, we're starting to work with um, people that need help. Good morning, Susie. Good morning, Fapisa. Good morning, Little Mo. Um, so, yeah. So get to your stores, you know, and maybe, you know, take your grandma with you, help her to the store or if you need something, take an elder. You'll get in faster. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the good news from Amazon, they're raising their um, hourly rates, $2 an hour. Um, wow. Right now? And they're going to, um, I think they've, they're going away from overtime, if I read this right. They're going away from overtime, and it's going to double time. So with the wow. rate that, uh, so that team members would normally go into um, overtime, um, mm -hmm. If I read that right, they're going to double time. So Amazon is um, stepping up and paying their employees. Um, again, this is a key part of our, our industry right now. Our economy is really being propped up right now by very uh, a small segment of it. So mm -hmm. whatever we can do to support retailers that are open, obviously we're clearing the shelves really fast. So right. um, the support is there. But Amazon and Whole Foods is owned by Amazon as well. <coughs> Oh, so I didn't know that. Amazon's doing Good their part. Good to know. 
Look at Amazon. They've been busy. And I went on Amazon and they were hardly, they had like, they were out of water. They were out of, a lot of stores are out of water. Out of, I just went on to be nosy to see um, what I can get. And I heard that people were gouging prices, but I hope that's not true. Oh, it's got, it, it happens in every crisis. Yeah. There's people out there that want to gouge and make an extra buck. The good thing is those things get put out on social media right. really quick. Like that fool that bought 17,000 units of hand sanitizer. Um, he got blown up real quick and uh, his name got out there. And I don't even know what they, he tried to sell that back on Amazon or eBay. I can't remember which platform. And they said, nope. So he's stuck with a garage full of hand sanitizer, which is good. <laughs> That's what he gets. So shout out to Susie Cassidy, who's on, uh, Britt Malona, who's all the way down the road in Vallejo. Um, Taoa Yane, good morning. Uh, Rhoda said, uh, Dr. Reno, thank you for blasting our parents out on social media. <laughs> Big Al, but uh, DJ Al is on. Uh, go follow him on social media. If you when we get free and clear to have pates, you can um, hire DJ Al. Um, good morning, so Julia McMullen. There is tons of you, tons and tons and tons, and we appreciate it. If you find the information that Dr. Reno put out, go ahead and share, 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 um, so that your friends and um, so on can hear Dr. Reno um, and his answer your questions. So there you go. And uh, what else? What else we got? You know, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, so I'm going to go into my Pacifica podcasts. There's a whole bunch of podcasts that are um, out and a lot of them cannot um, get into their studios and so they have their on they're on YouTube they're on SoundCloud go download go check them out for anchor. the culture anchor uh, anchor uh, has a lot of uh, Pacific Islanders um, for the culture you can check them out there's also um, Kava cast Kava cast tough sorry about it Yes, sorry about it. Oh, there, look at you. Hella Bella. Hella Bella. Afro Tene, who is, she's, um, she's on every Monday, or she, you, you know, you have to catch her, but she's live on Facebook. I love her. Love, 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 love her. Um, who else? Mm. Oh, um, what's his name? Sua. Jonathan. Justin Sua. Uh, Justin. <laughs> Jonathan. Uh, Sua. He's in Florida. He has like, a thousand, uh, a fifteen hundred uh, podcast, but they're like three to five minutes, so you can. And they're motivate. He's a motivational speaker. Really polished. Really, he's, po he's really good. Like, and he's on every morning for like three to five minutes. And so I listen to him in the morning on my way to work. And I haven't listened lately because I haven't been to work. I'm working from home. Um, good morning, Steph. Steph Lemalu is on. Love you, love you, love you. So it, you know, R Dr. Reynal Samo. I had a lot, a lot of good information. So please. Please share our uh, video so that your friends can listen to the answers and, and maybe it'll help somebody. And one of the big things that I love that he said was because we have our PI, our PI what, um, um, you know, for full and, and stuff like that. Don't do not do not do that. If you are ch using um, home remedies and uh, as soon as you get respiratory, um, what? respiratory some kind of something you know you coughing or you're congested go to the hospital do not you don't put your head over a pot and take in the steam tupe good morning tupe um so yeah the everything is share 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 dr reno we appreciate his information so i was talking about also i need you to go shop pacifica um there's you know if you go on instagram someone solutions they've listed a whole bunch of pacifica entrepreneurs that you can follow there's um what's that to to hunt it who is out of sam uh well san bruno oakland bay area afakasi prince um Follow her on Instagram. Um, who else? Oh my gosh, I can't even think of them. There's so many. Lex five five. Oh, they have car playing cards. I just seen their playing cards, and it they have you know um, Pacific Islander images on the cards. Go follow them. It's so cute, so cute. Wayfinders, who we had um, Wayfinders on the show. Um, he's an entrepreneur who we met at the Samoan Solutions Turkey Trap. 
we have Carl, go ahead. You want to go? Because, you know, I'm getting tired oh, of my no, You were on a roll. <laughs> I'll let you go. Fatma oh. Malu Designs, who is uh, from Sister Epi Almavai, um, and Wear Kava. That's at Wear Kava, right? On the social media platforms. Uh, a lot of designers out there. Lots of designers. And so. Urbanesians. That's U R B A N N E S I A N. We have our. Uh, producer who here has a lot more information than we do on where to shop Pacifica. So it's Tosh Lav Love. Oh, Samoan Solutions. Yes. Go to Samoan Solutions um, page, our sisters, Epi and Fanga. They have um, on their highlights, Shop Pacifica. Um, you can look up all Talofa Kids. Um, Fatma Malu Designs, of course. Um, that is Epi Almavai's um, um, brand um, Eastburn clothing they have this cute little shirt that says for owls and it has it's really cute uh, we are Kava I have Kava shoes uh, sauce nails I had their earrings on this week heavy uh, tapa cloth big hoops but I like my hoops big because you know the bigger the hoops <laughs> just kidding just kidding oh my god my kids just yelled at me I got um <laughs> I got a calendar, which I wish I could bring it over here, um, that I got from Tosh Love. And um, my kids learn a Samoan word every day. Um, so I love that. Urbanesians has some really cute backpack, backpacks. And I'm a, I am love backpacks, so I'm, uh, I'm hooked. Uh, Wood Soteria. I mean, tons and tons and tons and tons. So go to Samoan Solutions Instagram page and click their highlight that says Shop Pacifica. And then, um, you know, start there. You know what I mean? Let's support each other. Start there. You're looking for shoes, go there. If you don't find anything you like, then go where you think you might find something cute, but I doubt it. <laughs> Couture clothing. Oh, very cute. Lex. 55. I'm telling you, go follow their page because they have these cute cards that they just created and they have PI uh, images on the cards. Like a queen of hearts has a uh, taupo and then they have, I mean, ugh, it's so cute. You got to go check it out. Tons and tons. Tribal Hawaiian. Oh, they have these cute stingray uh, earrings I just seen. Anyway, so I'm rambling on, but I just wanted to make sure that everybody got the information that uh, Dr. Reno Samoa was putting out. So we just need you to share, share, share so that you can um, pass on the information. And a lot of businesses are open. Sangato Bakery in Utah, they have curbside. You can pick up curbside, call in, order your, your uh, pastries and food, and they will bring it out to you curbside. So there you go. Carl, any information you'd like to share? Uh, no, I've got to jump on a call at 1130. So um, I'm going to say a few words before I go. Oh, okay. Go <laughs> ahead. I mean, me and men are going to keep talking. Um, Just kidding. Actually, we, we have people here that could get on the mic. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, this is COVID related. So in my nine to five, um, I've got some... Uh, things to clear up so i and i don't have uh this written out so i'm not really sure how this is going to come out but um you know this is a time where it's unprecedented in our country's history it's unprecedented um really in modern history of the world um you're going to hear all kinds of crazy things about predictions and all these kind of things um educate yourselves as to what you need to do what is the most responsible thing to do um, if you don't need to put yourself at risk, then don't put yourselves at risk. And I see um, on the media, I see kids on spring break on the beach um, partying in clubs and doing those kind of things. Um, you know, what is the risk if they don't do that? And that's really what the question is, is what's the risk if you want to go do something? We had a long conversation with my daughter last night. She wanted to drive to a different city and, and hang out with uh, some of her friends and we kind of talked about, you know, what's the risk? If you don't do that, what do you have? You have disappointment maybe that you don't get to spend time with your friends. Um, but then what is the risk on the other end? And the risk is could be dire. So find out what you need to do. Um, don't put yourself at risk when you don't need to. Do everything you can that you control. Um, and then find some positive things to get your mind um Get your mind occupied. Go for walks, exercise. I'm seeing all kinds of things online 
in terms of examples that we can do um, in our houses, in our, you know, in our, in our walks, taking walks in the neighborhood um, and still maintaining social distancing and all that, the hand washing and all those kind of things. My, I guess my point is um, it's not the end of the world. Um, although that some people would have you believe that find positivity, find positive messaging, find positive people, um, surround yourself with those and their messages and their, the online forums and those kind of things. Um, and stay, stay living your life. Don't let this fold you up. Um, don't just let this make you into somebody that you aren't. This should really amplify who we are rather than diluting the, the character of the people that we are. So I've got to get going here in about five minutes, but I wanted to make sure I got that out. Yay. Uh, good morning, Epi. Our sister Epi is on. She was um, our co-host when we, our guests uh, don't show up. <laughs> Um, so good morning, sister. Um, we are going to go to a song right now. We're going to take a what? Oh, my call was canceled, so I'm oh. stuck here the rest of the way. Oh, yay! <laughs> We're going to go to a quick break, and I'm going to. Our producer is going to play a song, and then we'll be right back in a couple of minutes. Um, the song we're going to play is Finn Groova featuring Fiji, uh, Wife You. Wife You. So we'll be right back. You're listening to the FICA Podcast. I am Naki. With me in the, in the dining room is Carl. <laughs> <laughs> in the studio. In the studio. In the dining room. And hold on. And we're back. You're listening to the FICA Podcast. I am Naki. In our studio is Kalolo. That was Finn Groova featuring Fiji, Wife You. Not Bite You, Wife You. <laughs> Bill, that might be good. <laughs> Just kidding. We're a full stride now. Just kidding. <laughs> wife You with Finn Groova featuring Fiji. <laughs> I just wanted to shout out some more people who are tuning in. Uh, oh, Vicky. Hi, Vic. Uh, Mavis Siuta. There you go, girl. Anna Sangapolutele. Good morning. Jeff Banga Mangel. My Mangel family. Colorado in the house. Uh, Wit. My niece Wit is on Epi. Okay, I think I hit everybody. So um, we had Dr. Reno Samoa on. And if uh, we would like you to share this um, episode so that your friends and other people can listen to uh, the questions that were answered from Dr. Samoa about COVID-19. Uh, what were we talking about? We were talking about uh, Essence of Mana. Oh, yes. Go ahead. We are going to talk about Essence of Mana, which is a 12-week program, right? Yeah, it's a parenting class. Um, and Naki and Neo, Neo's not here, but Naki actually attended um, one of their classes. So maybe Naki can talk about what she saw and the benefits of, uh, of the program with the people that you went through the class with. Yeah, so um, it so it's a twelve week program to support adult family members in developing skills in communication and real life nurturing dynamic stuff. It's for the whole family. Um, they have um, they they take if you have kids, they have uh, people to uh, watch your children, and um, it's really teaches you how to deal with Pacific Islander. Um, I don't know issues. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. we are heavy with you know, whip out the belt and, and it teaches you how to cope with, you know, what other ways to, um, not punish, but to deal with other situations other than beating your child. Right. And it, didn't they talk about, uh, they talk about cultural issues, mm -hmm. right? That other kids, the non PI kids wouldn't have to deal with. Right. Right. So. Yeah, and so they have um, Neil Veve who comes in and talks about um, how to talk to your children or how to deal or the insight of dealing with the LGBTQ um, child, how to um, help um, mentally and, and, and how to help you deal with your child or how to talk to your child. And then they have uh, Sister uh, Gaynor um, who comes in and talks to people about how to recognize the signs of uh, if your child is in a gang or doing drugs. And so, I mean, it's, it's a great class 
class, a 12 weeks, um, put on by Sister Nani Wilson, who is with Asian American Recovery Services, Essence of Mana. It's a 12 week program. It is, I, I took the class with my boyfriend, Neil, and I am a mother. I mean, you know, my kids range from age 12 to 29. And so I've learned something new each class and how to, uh, deal with my Pacific Islander children who, um, is, is totally different than if you are a non PI kid because they have different issues. You know, most kids come home and do their homework and a lot of PI kids have to come home and, um, either there's a fala lava that week. So you have a funeral, for instance, you have to do fa'as all week and ka'iyasua or, you know, do whatever the matai tells you to do before you even do your homework. So it helps you deal with those kind of situations uh, mentally, mentally and give you the words to talk to your children. How about that? That's awesome. Mm-hmm. It was good, good that you had that information. I did, I right, because I took the class, so it was very interesting. I have, uh, good morning, my niece, Rachel Jordan. Thank you for tuning in. Lena Manuleleua, who is on, good morning. Uh, Renee Ellsworth, good morning, Nay. So we talked to Dr. Samoa. I'm going to say this again. We talked to Dr. Samoa earlier in the hour, and um, he had a lot of information, uh, good information. He answered questions. Please share this podcast so that um, your friends or uh, family can listen. Um, it, it was really, really, really good. So um, we also had, did you want to talk about what else did you have? We just wanted to make sure we cover everybody. I did have something I needed to, I was talking about um, the census. We need everybody to fill out the census. So um, let me just do my spiel real quick. It's we can help our communities and families in a big way by participating in the census 2020. Pacific Islanders, we were way under, under count, under did you hear me? Undercounted in 2010. Starting now, just answer nine easy questions to help inform how money will support services in our communities and schools over the next 10 years. So if your child is five now, in the 10 years from now, they'll be 15. And then what services are, you know, they, there's a bunch of services that they can get from now until 15. Uh, the census will also help businesses make smart decisions on where to invest and open the doors. To learn more, visit CaliforniaCensus.org. Also, we need you to fill out your census. Everyone has received one in the mail. It is 100% confidential. And also, if you don't fill it out, somebody will come to your house to ask you, why the hell didn't you fill it out? So there you go. And you don't want nobody knocking on your door because then, you know, your house is messy. <laughs> you don't want to let them in. You ain't got no food to feed them. So there you go. Fill out the census. Kalolo? Mm. No, I'm good. I think that um, the things that we wanted to get across, the positivity, that message, um, people just make sure that you have a plan. You have things that you want to go through. Um, there are really cool things like so on TikTok I saw a guy on a balcony and he was leading the exercise down on a soccer field um, and they were uh, watching him and the social distancing thing so things like that um, we have a we have hot siva here in the Bay Area um, our very own Neil Veve um, will be leading that tomorrow morning it will be online um, it will be on his Facebook page that is Neil Veve. Um, at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So Hot Siva is a low-impact stretching and aerobics um, program to Pacific Islander music. And Neo has done some research with this and uh, really looked at w how, the, how the PI community responds. So the example he always gives is <clears throat> yoga was something that he had tried but our people getting up off the floor and then down on the floor and back up off the floor. Um, he Ain't going to happen. After a few times, it was just down on the floor and sit there and watch him. Yeah. So he's he's designed Hot Siva to specifically cater to our Pacific Islander community. And that will start tomorrow at 8. I'm sorry, 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Standard Time on Neo Veves Facebook page. Yes. Hot Siva. Yes. So go follow him on uh, Facebook. And at 8 a.m. tomorrow, like Carl said, um, Hot Siva. It's really low impact uh, stretching and aerobics to PI music. And um, I'll be tuning in because I need some kind of exercise. Good morning, Ray Follow. Um, 
Yvette Manamea. Good morning, Yvette. Uh, Renee, good morning. Oh, hi, Renee. Love you too. So I think, did we hit everything? I think we did. I think we hit everything. So um, we just wanted to thank everybody for tuning in. Um, we appreciate that you tuned in this morning. I appreciate it. Um, thanks for Hot Siva reminder. Yes, yes, 8 o'clock, Hot Siva. I'll be tuning in to um, Good Morning Sister O. So I just wanted to thank everybody for uh, supporting us this morning. Go ahead and share this podcast um, to inform everybody um, about Dr. Reynolds Samoa. Did you have something to say? Yeah, just real quick. Um, hear that, what Dr. Samoa said, and it's one of the biggest things that I took out of it, is the medical personnel and the medical professionals, they are going to work for you. And what you can do for them is stay home and stop the transmission of this virus. So they're doing their part. We need to do our part. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you are doing everything you can to stop the transmission of the COVID virus. Yeah. So share, share, share. Ray, oh, don't worry, Ray. You can start from the beginning or, or Carl will upload the uh, podcast later and you can listen to um, listen to it. So thank you, Ray. Ray Follow is tuning in. He's an uh, uh, awesome, awesome, awesome follower. Um, Tammy, so, okay, I gotta go because I'm um, just thanking everybody on our live feed. So um, thank you for tuning in to the FICA podcast. Please follow us on all social media outlets. Please share this. A uh, lot of information from Dr. Reynold Samoa. We appreciate and love him. Tune in every Sunday from 10 a.m. to 12 right here on our Facebook Live or download our FICA app and listen to us anytime. Special shout out to our producer this morning, T. Manamoli, my boo, Fua Lunga Visuals. Have a great week and we'll check in with you next Sunday. Come back to FICA with us.